to you, my fellow dark ones. How are you guys doing today? How's life? And yes, welcome to the hole. I'm doing some maintenance and it's a teeny tiny bit cluttered. If you guys remember, I added a few spawners to our mob farm over here. And well, today I added one more. And yes, even though we didn't have silk touch, I used the cardboard box. I really want to try and do something, so let's see if it actually works. I have made a vacuumulator. This is a vacuum hopper, but it is from thermal expansion. It's actually quite good. So if we drop something here, you should absorb it one day. Yeah, it's not the fastest thing in the world. You don't really need to have a filter, but can you have a kit? Is it going to make it faster? Maybe not. Well, that doesn't really matter. What I want to try and do is to filter out the gems from apotheosis. And yes, instead of Inferium, we're also going to try and get the hearts. Because I kind of noticed you can melt the hearts and get the higher tier one. I didn't know that. First things first, we're going to entangle this vacuumulator to one entangled block over here. That should input everything into the drawers that we have over there. And then somehow we're going to have two more entangled blocks for two netherite chests. Like so. And basically what I want this guy to do is that I want it to only accept apotheosis gems. I just removed the MBT so it should accept any gem. So if I drop the gem, pick it up, thank you, it should go here, yes. Okay, honestly speaking, this is working surprisingly well. At first I tried to go with integrated dynamics, but uh, I'm really garbage at that mod. It's actually not my fault, just call the filter filter. I don't want to program my filter. But anyways, I have removed the chest. Instead, we have some barrels. And yes, we're getting all the gems. And there are a few things that I'm keeping. I don't know why. I mean, why would you need iron or carrots and potatoes? But I do have a few filters. First off, we do have an entangled block, so we would be able to use multiple sides of the vacuumulator. One side just puts everything inside the drawer and well, all the items go here. Correct? There is another side which blacklists everything that has to go into the drawer, also the gems from Apotheosis, and they get voided. Then I do have another item pipe for only the gems from Apotheosis, which goes into these entangled blocks, which are going to be these two barrels over here. And since there's always a chance of an overflow, anything which cannot go inside the barrels will be voided, just in case I get too many Apotheosis gems. So I'll try to have some fun. See you in an hour. Ish. I'm not exactly sure, but I think last episode we killed 3,000 zombies, but this time we're close to 7,000. And I didn't even spend that much time. <laughs> but here are all the gems. You might notice that we have a disproportionate number of some of them, especially the flawless gem of the samurai. And well, the reason for that is some of the mobs explode and give you a crazy amount of loot. But I also have 160 hearts. You can also get the bubbly hearts from... Oh my goodness, so many ghosts. I'm hoping they despawn. Yes, as I was saying, you can get the bubbly horse from loot fabricators now, but uh, I don't want to do that. My system is not really set for that. That's the problem. Besides, I have plenty of hearts. We just have to cook them. With a teeny tiny bit of crafting, we have 10 more hearts. Oh my goodness, it's more pink. <laughs> thankfully, we are getting one of the gems that I really wanted, the Warlord. And thankfully, I already have a flawless. I think I can make a perfect gem. Yeah. Another flawless, and then you mix it using Godforge pearls. I'm missing something. Maybe it's the dust. We have some here. Yes. The perfect gem. And it's a challenge. I pressed the wrong button again. Lost treasure of the gods. I didn't find it, I made it. So the reason that I love this is that if you wear it on your chest plate, it's going to give you plus 30% to your maximum health. That's a lot. It's just that I really wanted to make another one. Yeah, that could take some time. But really, it's actually paying off. I was not expecting that. We already had a flawless, and I just did manage to make another flawless. Plus four levels to existing sharpness. The thing is, I already have a gem on my sword, and I really want to remove it. Thankfully, there seems to be a way from apotheosis. Vial of Searing Expulsion. It just needs a thick potion, and voila, the sword goes in. Here is the vial. And yes. The gem is gone. So I can add my perfect gem. We do 65 attack damage. I'm going to make another one for my pick because that adds to fortune. Later on. Not now. Because today for me is December 24th. And I can finally open this gift. Dude, you said December 20th. Oh, I'll open it tomorrow. But anyways, if you guys remember last episode, we got into a bit of Greg tech and we are now at the low voltage age. Low voltage age does require a ton of steel and I can't afford that much steel. I don't want to use mechanism for some reason. My brain does weird things and I don't know why. So as soon as possible, we want to move on to medium voltage. Why? It just needs aluminium. And I do have a decent supply of aluminium. Well, not in there, but in my dank null, maybe more. 
Well, long story short, our supply of aluminium is better than our supply of steel. However, until we would be able to unlock the medium voltage age, there are a few bits that we need to do. So what are the things that we have to do? Good question. Our goal is to make the good electronic circuit, which is our first MV circuit. You might notice that there are two recipes for a good electronic circuit. One of them is just crafting, which you need three basic circuits. Or you can do that inside a basic circuit assembler. But it does require the good electronic circuits. So our main goal is to get a ton of basic circuits, the LV1. For a very weird reason, we are also going to need the monocrystalline silicon and also the bane of my life. Gallium arsenide. I really hate that thing. I really do. <laughs> so first things first, let us deal with the arsenic. Our miners are providing us with ores from Greg Tech and what we want is some cobaltite. I am trying to do this with using minimum machines. This is not the most efficient way of doing that. We're going to put them inside a forge hammer. That gives us the crushed cobaltite ore, correct? I'm using a forge hammer because, you know, it's way faster. Otherwise, you can also use a macerator, but it's going to be incredibly slow. Look, yeah, by the time this is halfway through, we're almost done here. <laughs> so, we shall crush it again. That gives us the impure pile of cobaltite. We don't have to do it like that, though. We can also use our hammer. That's faster. I have also made myself a centrifuge, and here's what we're going to do. We put the impure pile of cobaltite dust in. It's very slow, I know. This is why we're rushing through things. <laughs> and that gives us exactly what we want. Cobaltite dust. Cobaltite dust in an electronic blast furnace with some oxygen is going to give us arsenic trioxide and a bit of sulfur dioxide. But that part is not very important. What we're interested in is just the arsenic trioxide. So now if we get one more electrolyzer and electrolyze the arsenic trioxide, we get arsenic. Lovely. But that takes care of arsenic for gallium. We're going to cheat a bit. There is the alchemistry mod. If you break down smooth stone slabs, there is a 1.6% chance of getting gallium. And obviously we need 16 gallium just to make one gallium dust. So I guess any moment. Yes, 16. Make me gallium. Lovely. So there is a slight chance that due to ore dictionaries, this is not going to work. But let us try this. We shall have a mixer. We take some arsenic and see if we can make gallium arsenide. No, which is perfectly fine. We just take the gallium, we break it down to tiny piles of gallium dust, we reassemble it, we get gallium from Grectic. And that should give me gallium arsenide. Yeah? Oh yeah, it needs a programmed circuit. There you go. Lovely. We have two gallium arsenide dust. I just wanted to let you know that we have skipped all of these quests. We had to make ore processing, we had to make sulfuric acid, and we needed to make sodium persulfate. And I also had to spam machines that I had to remove in one hour. Now we have reached the stage that it is a wonderful opportunity that I would be able to explain to you why are we cheating with gallium. The reason that we needed gallium arsenide is that we need to move on to medium voltage and for that we need the circuit. The MV circuit does require something called diodes. And if you want to make diodes, you have to use copper wire, small pile of gallium arsenide, and liquid glass. And that gives you one. However, there is a much better way. If you use the same pile of gallium arsenide with silicon, you will get something called monocrystalline silicon. And yes, I did notice this is MV, but if you cut it, you will get 16 pieces. And if you use polyethylene with annealed copper, that's actually going to give you four diodes. That's a humongously better rate. So here's the plan. We're going to make a few good electronic circuits. We are going to use them in order to make the circuit assembler. Because you see, it actually gives you a far better yield than this one. Then we are going to make a cutter so that we can cut the silicon bowl. And we are going to use a few of the mods which are manually crafted in order to automate ethylene. There are like a bajillion different ways of making ethylene and unfortunately the good ones start at high voltage or medium voltage. At this stage, I think the only thing that I can do is to get some oil and put it inside a distillery which is really garbage. Anyways, I'm getting some silicon dioxide by centrifuging some deep slate dust. If we put that inside an electrolyzer, that should give us silicon. Yes. And besides, at first I wanted to use this, but deep slate also works. Another thing that we need in order to make the actual circuit is the circuit board, which does require a teeny tiny bit of glue. So for that, I'm just centrifuging some sticky resin. Generally, the goal is to get to multi-blocks faster or at least have everything in high voltage. Well, as best as we can, we can't cheese everything. <laughs> but anyways, I have made the new circuit boards. I have also made an arc furnace so that we would be able to make annealed copper. And I'm converting it into fine annealed copper wire. So if we just get a teeny tiny bit of gallium arsenide, that should be more than enough. That hopefully is going to give me diodes at a decent rate. Amazing. We got two. And that means, ladies and gentlemen, here is our first good electronic circuit. We're at medium voltage now. 
And I guess now we can start making MV machines. Actually, before we start making MV machines, there were a few machines that I had to add. One of them is an assembler for converting wires into cables. You know, using rubber. We have 241 buckets. <laughs> That's a lot. And of course, the other thing that I made, which I'm extremely happy about, is the basic circuit assembler. So for LV, it actually dabbles your circuits. You know, if I give it some wires, that should give us two circuits, right? I put something extra inside. Yeah, you. And that's the wrong circuit board. <laughs> it's this one. Yeah. So this is going to be way, way more efficient. Look, we got two. Also, for the MV circuit, instead of three basic circuits, we just need two. But now that we have access to MV circuits, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start making some silicon. I'm still making steel. So gallium arsenide, some silicon, and circuit has to be number one, I think doesn't make much of a difference and I don't understand it, but it has to be number two. Yeah. Now, if we get an advanced cutter and cut the silicon, I guess we should be able to automate the production of circuits too. And also we need polyethylene. This is so nice. <laughs> so many circuits. All right, guys, it is the next day and it is Christmas. So Merry Christmas. Now I should be able to open my mysterious gift. Dude, it's 25th. We will see. <laughs> I really hate that gift. But you might notice that I have been busy and now we do have an MV setup. I did make an MV converter and this is 16 times annealed copper cable. I am using annealed copper because I thought it's going to have less loss over blocks, but it doesn't really matter. We are at the MV age. It's 128 volts. Even up to the end over here, we should be able to get like 120 volts. So it doesn't have a huge impact. But progress wise, I have made a polarizer because you need polarizers in order to make MV electric motors. You need to make the magnetic steel rod and well, that is the only recipe. The second thing I made was a wire mill because we need a lot of wires and that LB one was incredibly slow. This one is decently fast. The next thing that you absolutely have to make is the electrolyzer. And the reason for that is you need to process some ruby dust in order to get chromium. And why do you need chromium? Because in order to make the stupid advanced cutter to cut the silicon, you need vanadium steel. <laughs> Basically, vanadium steel requires chrome. It also does require vanadium, which I'm trying to get bit by bit. Vanadium magnetite is some sort of an ore and I'm just centrifuging it twice. That gives me vanadium. So chrome, steel and vanadium should give us some vanadium steel. But there is a circuit. Yes, circuit number one. There you go. I have also decided to make a very small ore processing over here using advanced macerators and an ore washer. I needed to process so many ores and well, steam macerators were just literally garbage. But we do have our vanadium steel dust. That's good. How do you cook it? MV circuit number one. So circuit number one, we shall remove the iron and you cook. Please. Oh my goodness, it's a blood moon. Okay, I give you a very small progress update tomorrow. I think I'm going to get the cutter anyways. That takes 80 seconds for vanadium steel. That's going to be fun. Where's the guy? Yes, it is finally daytime and I think in around 30 seconds, I should be able to make the stupid cutter. I'm just waiting for one more vanadium steel. Yes, finally. You have no idea how long this took, but vanadium steel boss saw blade. And if I have not done anything wrong, this is our advanced cutter. Lovely. We have also made some monocrystalline silicon and we need to cut them. And yes, I do have four in my inventory, but that was a quest reward. And honestly, it's not that useful. Actually, we should put you somewhere where you have access to water. Yeah, it's getting water. We can cut the silicon. That should give us the wafers and we would be able to make diodes at a more efficient rate. I have also decided to make a lathe because we need to engrave a few stuff. Where's my lathe? One of them is a ruby lens, which is easy peasy. The other one is emerald. I have removed the ore processing filters for emerald and well, we need to process some ores. It can be a glass lens. Oh, it's high voltage, so no. That means we need to have an advanced sifter. Lovely. Which I guess it doesn't really matter. We can just put it here. I think for the lens, we're going to need the... Yeah, that one. Oh, I'm an idiot. Ignore the sifter. We just needed to have one emerald plate. And that goes into the lathe. Lovely. We're good. Also, I have been processing some olivine dust in order to get magnesium so that we can make stainless steel. That is the next tier of metal that we have to make for the HVH. However, now that we have almost everything, I think it's time to start making some polyethylene. For making polyethylene, I think I came up with a nice solution in the MVH. Let's take one cable. We're gonna put it on this side. And yes, we're going to need four chemical reactors. Here is one. The first chemical reactor is going to take the hydrogen that we're getting from electrolyzing water. 
it's going to mix it with sulfur and we're going to get hydrogen sulfide, correct? We need to take that hydrogen sulfide, put it inside another chemical reactor with circuit number two, that's going to give us sulfuric acid. And remember, I don't actually have that much sulfur, so this is not good. <laughs> but yeah, we got sulfuric acid. Now we need to convert it into ethylene. For that, we need another chemical reactor. And the best recipe that I found was this one. You need ethanol. So if it doesn't take that much time and resources, we might do the Grectech version. Where is it? Well, it's biomass. You brew stuff. Okay, then we're not going to do that. Because thankfully, there is another ethanol from Pneumatic Craft. And this should be fairly cheap. We just need yeast and that's it. We already have mushrooms, right? I did plant them. Yes, I'm a wise person with beautiful eyes and extremely merciful. He will have fun, don't you worry. I have made two thermoneumatic processing plants and one air compressor, but we don't actually need to have a compressor. We just need to have the processing plants like so, but it has to be done in the nether, otherwise the temperature is going to be messed up. We provide one of them with water, and if I provide it with some mushroom, that should give us yeast. And yes, the temperature is good. The yeast is going to be extracted and we put it inside the second plant, you know, give it some apples. I think that gives you the best yield. 15 millibuckets, that's garbage. At this speed? Well, it is what it is. It doesn't have to be the fastest thing in the world. It just needs to give us some ethanol. We're just gonna fill in the chests and we're good. I forgot to mention the part with ethanol from pneumatic craft has to be done in the nether because otherwise uh, you need a compressor. The temperature over there is already fine. But anywho, we have a dimensional tank and now we're going to have one more chemical reactor. And if we provide it with ethanol, yeah, that should give us ethylene very slowly. But obviously this is Greg Tech, so there is one more step. We need to mix it with oxygen so that we get polyethylene. This should be my oxygen channel. Yes. One more chemical reactor. Didn't want to do that. We first put the pump and please just give me the ethylene. No, you also get diluted sulfuric acid. Okay, I have to change this. It's a bit of a janky wiring, but yeah. We're getting that ethylene, we're mixing it with oxygen and we're getting polyethylene. We have four buckets. And I accidentally broke a machine and I have a filter which I absolutely have no idea what it does. Nothing. So why? Oh, now it stacks. Fine. Moving on, we needed that polyethylene in order to start making some diodes. So we just take our wafers. We already have the annealed copper. And for some reason, you're not working. Oh, there's glass inside. Yeah, now we should be fine. So instead of two diodes, this should give us four. It's a far better yield. And uh, let's make more circuits all the time. This is lovely. I think if everything goes well, we might hit the HVH today. I'm not sure though. I wasn't expecting things to go this smoothly and we can actually move on. This is a drawer with one bucket of water. I know it's very stupid, but we're going to put it here. And we're also going to install a void upgrade because the next thing that we need is silicon. And we need it in incredibly large quantities and you get it from electrolyzing clay. The problem is that one of the byproducts is going to be water and I don't want water. I have been trying different things. Clay seems to be the best. Oh yeah, it's way faster and it gives you a decent yield. We are going to convert all the silicon that we have into monocrystalline silicon, which is circuit number two again. It's getting confusing. We're gonna cut it, we're going to make chips, ICs, and everything. One huge bottleneck that I have is the electronic blast furnace. You might notice that it takes 550 seconds just to make one silicon. We need to be able to cut down that number as much as possible, so first off, we're going to upgrade the energy hashes to medium voltage. And yes, I have been trying to make some cantle, and then I realized in order to make cantle ingots, you are going to need a vacuum freezer. But the energy hatches are also fine, that should cut down the number by 50%. We just need a brand new lens. I did make a laser engraver, I don't know where it is. I thought I made it. No, I never did. Okay. Oh, you do need to have the exquisite emerald in order to make it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you needed the stupid sifter after all. Where is it? Okay. So we take the crushed emerald ore, we wash it. That gives us the purified one. And then we sift. Hope for the best. That's not amazing. This is just a matter of time. We will get it eventually. Oh, we got it. <laughs> I'll go make the engraver. Yeah, I think this was the hard part. The rest of that should be easy. I just wanted to mention a vacuum freezer requires EV circuits. You need a mainframe for this? No, that's IV. Okay. Anyways, I have my chip. We shall cut, make an advanced assembler so that we can get the coils. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, MV energy hatch. We shall have two of them. I was absolutely wrong. By upgrading this guy to HV, 
the time is cut by 75%. I mean, look, we're getting one steel ingot every six seconds. However, I just realized for making stainless steel in an electronic blast furnace, uh, well, we can use this recipe, it takes 55 seconds, but with nitrogen gas, it takes 36 seconds. The gist of it is we need to get some nitrogen, we need one lapis plate. As I just realized, there is a wonderful machine from Greg Tech called Advanced Gas Collector. You put it in the overworld and you get air. So there you go. Obviously, the way that you get nitrogen is from air. Are you collecting air? Circuit number one? Yes, I'm getting air. <laughs> and I guess if we centrifuge it, yeah, we get oxygen and nitrogen. That's what we want. Another thing is, uh, maybe we should put it here, because then I can send the oxygen over here. So a centrifuge, oh, we're out of circuits. That's not amazing. But yeah, very slowly we're going to get some nitrogen. I just need to make some stainless steel dust. That's cantle. It has been a while later and we have a decent supply of stainless steel. Yes, yes, thank you for the quest. So if we want to cook it with nitrogen is circuit number two. Oh, it's already on two. So you go in and have fun. It takes exactly 37 seconds, which is perfect. But now that we're getting the next tier of metal, it's time to get the next tier of circuits. The basic electronic circuit board is no longer important and the good electronic circuit is no longer useful. So we just remove them from the list. Now we have to focus on basic integrated circuit, which is your second LV circuit. And that is why I actually had to make different types of lenses because we needed the IC chip. That goes in and hopefully everything works. We should get a circuit. Lovely. Oh, we got two. Amazing. And it's not a quest. <laughs> the gist of it is we need to change our line of circuits to these ones because now we should be able to use this basic integrated circuit in order to make the good integrated circuit, which is MV tier, and then use it to make advanced integrated circuit, which is HV. That is the plan. And I don't really think there is going to be a huge problem except for the transistor. Yeah, it does need silicon plate and I had to make two new machines. One of them is a bender and one of them is a chemical bath. The reason for that is very simple. In order to make transistors, what we're going to need is silicon plate. Silicon plate comes from silicon ingot and silicon ingot is hot. So we need to cool it down inside a chemical bath using water. And you obviously just cook the silicon to get the hot silicon. That, that's obvious. And the bender is just for making the plates. That's it. And I'll be honest with you, this is a far better method of making circuits. Oh my goodness. So let me try to get all the parts that we need for making the HV circuit. I will bring you right back. And let us also get the achievement for stainless steel. Eh, maybe it's not an achievement. I have made a few teeny tiny boo-boos. First off, you don't really need to have a bending machine. Secondly, it has been ages later. I had to wait for wires. But no, besides that, you can make silicon plates just inside the cutter. You put blocks, it gives you nine plates. Another teeny tiny boo-boo that I made is that you could not just smelt silicon. You had to use silicon dioxide. That was a high voltage recipe. And yeah, it should be an achievement. Now the only thing that I have to do is to mix it with some tin wires and we get transistors. Amazing. You can also carry polyethylene buckets. And you know, like put it in. Oh, it gives you eight. Uh-huh. I think I have also made all the parts. We have 64 MV circuits. That should give us 32 HV. And we're just missing a few bits and pieces. I'll be back in five minutes. It's been five minutes later and I'm back. And yes, we are making our first high voltage circuit. I was just waiting for some annealed copper, that's it. And I cannot believe my eyes. Advanced integrated circuit. Yes, we have officially entered the HVH. I think polyethylene sheets in order to make the HV machine whole. But yeah, you can do it inside an assembler with polyethylene. Let's do that. We want to make it official. We also don't have that much, so let's waste a bit. So HP machine casing and for the hole we just need gold cables. I think that's going to be easy. Come on, give me another one. Dude, thank you. So can I put everything in? Yep. <laughs> HP machine hole. We have made it official. I'll be very honest with you, I was not expecting to get to the high voltage age today. That actually went far better than I was expecting. We just want to disenchant and run. Who's suffocating? Oh! Don't suffocate and you don't come over here. They're having a fight, which is not good. You killed the guardian. Uh -huh. There is one achievement that I have to do one trade and I literally have nothing. We just go with blue eyes. Yeah, thank you. I will check which one of the guardians we have lost today and I will replace him, don't you worry. But I think now that we have reached the HV8, from next episode, we should be able to start automating everything. Cause this is honestly a mess. That is steam, that is LV and this is MV. So I think we will just move to our new base. 
and it doesn't really go higher than sharpness 9. What's wrong with you? Before we wrap up today's episode, there are a few things that I want to do. I did not mention this earlier in this mod pack, but the main reason that I went with applied energistics at the start was that I could use the spatial IO, meaning that we could have put some of the machines in different dimensions and don't worry about the lag. I have not seen compact machines in this mod pack, so I'm assuming that's not included. So instead, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and make a space station. Oh, the textures have changed. I have no idea what these are. Okay. In which redstone. And yes, I'm also trying to get into a teeny tiny bit of mechanism because we need to have a digital miner. I love the textures. Author of mechanism, you're amazing. It's just that now all of them look the same. <laughs> this is enrichment, this is infusing. And there's a teeny tiny bit of a difference. Also, with a few upgrades, we should be fine. Oh, I need a crusher too. I made a crusher, then I realized, yeah, you can just use a hammer. It's fine. <laughs> This is much better. It's consuming 6000 RF because it doesn't have any energy upgrades. I just wanted to mention, I have made the advanced tier installer, I made an osmium compressor, and this guy hasn't even finished one stack of gold dust. I guess the only thing remaining is to get a few atomic alloys and start making the digital miner. I don't think you need anything else, right? Yeah, I don't think so. So, teleportation cores, steel casing, logistical sorters, I'm assuming a handsome robot, yes, and there you go. Digital miner. That was easy. Now that we have the digital miner, let us at least try to go to the moon. We needed some oil and thankfully there is some here. I think the oil from pneumatic craft also counts, but this is here and it wasn't that far. Also, I am trying to clean up the ocean. I just dropped the bucket. It's fine. What are you? A hippo. I love hippos. It doesn't like me. We take him home. We do need to have a refinery, which is pretty cheap. We just give it oil and it should give us fuel which is also pretty fast. I know we have already done Ad Astro, but I didn't remember that. So we do need to have a NASA workbench. What? Automation NASA workbench. You can automate rockets. Why? I mean, why would you need like 10 rockets? <laughs> I don't know. And I don't really care. This is the rocket that we want, tier one. Actually, now I understand why you would need an automated NASA workbench because you can just set up a pattern. You don't have to do it one by one. But this also didn't take that long. Maybe five seconds. The fins, the head, the engine, and obviously the tanks. There you go. Tier one rocket. You scared me. A launch pad is not a bad idea. And I think you just need to have the one. Yep. Oh, another thing is that we need some oxygen, which again, if I remember everything, it just needs water and a bit of power. Yeah, we're getting oxygen. And the spacesuit itself is incredibly cheap, so there you go. And we can wear that. Where's my boots? Yes. You can't wear boots. You have to put it in. <laughs> it's okay. So the problem with the spacesuit that we have at this very moment is that it doesn't have any oxygen in it. And I think the only thing that we had to do was to put it in here. Yeah, it's full. Maybe we take some extra oxygen, just in case. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our spacesuit. We have fuel. We have the stupid rocket. And I don't really remember how to fill in the rocket, but that's not how you do that. With stick? Yeah. I think it takes three buckets of fuel. Perfect. And I guess we can go to the moon. Let's get some waypoints. I should have put that on auto crafting, but I have been lazy. See you on the moon. Also, I think they forgot the launch pad. So, solar system. Actually, this is one of the things that I wanted to check. In order to make a space station, we are going to need dish. Cool. We want to go to the moon. Press shift to dismount. We don't press shift. How do you slow down? Oh, you press space. Welcome to the moon. We just take our rocket. And honestly speaking, I don't really know why we came to the moon. I guess here we can find dish. I'm going to do some exploration. Hello. You look friendly. I have night vision. Let's use that. There are also enchantments that you can use on your regular armor. But I don't know. I like to have a space suit. It does make things more official. But that's dish. Are you dish? We got one. We got six. Lovely. But this is why I brought the digital miner so that I don't have to do this manually, although we have 47. Yeah, let's set up the digital miner. This is my second scroll of true sight and yeah, it's been 15 minutes or so. And look at all that dish. And yes, I forgot to silk touch everything. Oh, look at Earth. You can see Mexico. Anyways, here is the moon and I guess we can go back home without crashing. Oh, and by the way, I took some of these ice shards and they give you cryo fuel. I'm not really sure if you need it for higher tier rockets, but I brought some. Did you think we're done with exploration? No. Tier 2 rockets. I tried to make the netherite spacesuit and it seems it needs Ostrom. That one comes from Mars, so I'm assuming our spacesuit at this very moment should be more than enough. Oh, and by the way, let's not forget the digital miner. 
Oh, oh, it detects when you fuel it. Cool. See you on Mars. So again, solar system. This time we want Mars. Why can't I select Mars? I can't select Mars. <laughs> oh, did I refuel the wrong rocket? Maybe I did. Oh yeah, that was the wrong rocket. It's fine. We're going to majestically land on our little turf. And I'll try to get the correct rocket this time. Tier 2. You go over there. This is tier 2. We go in. And hopefully this time it works. Yes. I can go to Mars. I don't see the surface. Okay, I can see the surface. Come on. Thank you. So obviously over here we're just looking for Ostrom. Hello boys. I come in peace. Ladies and gentlemen, that should be a decent supply of Ostrom. You do find 600 plus ores in every chunk and I just move it like twice. We don't have to come here ever again. And to avoid confusions, here is my old rocket. Oh, this is the moon. Oops. <laughs> I have to wait 24 seconds. Oh, I can do this. It's fine. I'm assuming by now you guys get the gist. Here is a tier 3 rocket. This time, since we had access to Ostrom, I have upgraded my spacesuit. And we also have cryofuel. The difference is that you just need one bucket for one trip. Therefore, it's not really something which is 100% necessary. I think our next destination is going to be Venus. So see you on Venus. This is a way cooler rocket, by the way. <laughs> Look at all those engines. Solar system, uh, Venus, I think. I'm not suffocating, but you do fall really fast. Or it feels like that, at least. We have arrived. Come on, gently. Yes. And yes, one of the things that I forgot last time is to put a waystone on Mars, which is perfectly fine. What the hell are you? Whoop. Wait, do you give me sulfur? I think that was just an accidental creature. Nobody gives us sulfur. And these guys just drop a ton of rotten flesh. Are you sure you don't drop it? No. Well, we have one job to do. We need some calorite. I just love how it looks like hell. Mars had a lot of iron. Moon had a lot of iron. Here we have a lot of coal. Isn't coal supposed to be like from organic creatures? Maybe there was life on Venus. But there's gold. Interesting. I just want to find an opening, that's it. And I'm moving towards it. Oh, this is Calorite. And yeah, this is a great opening. We should have our lava production here. This time I actually remembered to put down the waystone. I know, I have an amazing memory. No, it's because when I arrived, I remembered I forgot my digital miner. But very good, we can go home. This time I didn't really harvest that much Calorite because I thought there's no point. But we do have a waypoint. We can go there whenever we want. Ladies and gentlemen, the final tier of rockets. I don't think there's anything better than this one. Looks amazing. And yeah, the main reason that I wanted some calorite was to get the final tier of spacesuit. We do have apotheosis. I have to make this armor nice. And well, you see how fast I'm walking, which is garbage. And I didn't want to bother with the tiers. We just go with the final one. However, the only thing remaining is that we want to set up our space station, which I did forget to take notes. But yeah, thankfully, because of the quest, we know what we need. So some steel, some iron, some dish, I guess. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> we can go. Oh, I'm waiting for fuel. We have the fuel. I don't like this rocket. It has less engines. Wait, you can go to Proximo Centauri. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I actually forgot. We did that last time. This time, we just want a space station. Did you make the stupid station? I'm scared. Yes, there is a station. Oh, they made a lovely hole for me. Thank you. We majestically land. Next episode, we are going to work on this station. But for the moment, we're just going to have a waypoint. And yeah, it already kind of looks amazing. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.